Hi guys. Well, it is. Not your little bone or not? Hi guys. It has been a spectacularly gorgeous. I am talking about an over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of everything on this spectacularly gorgeous early fall of 2020. Three day that would be Wednesday September where are we 27th or 28th somewhere in there 2023 and uh, so I've been having fun being visited by some of my fellow doomers today so I can finally get uh, back to doom scrolling and uh, <laughs> so guys I was thinking of going over some of those comments about my rant from the shallow end of the uh, Doomsday Prophecy pool <coughs> yesterday about the uh, fentanyl overdoses in, on the streets of San Francisco, but uh, I think uh, a rare foray into the shallow end of the doomsday prophecy pool to get the uh, either the lefties panties in a wide or the uh, Trump tards panties in a wide. Uh, I like to do that occasionally just to get panties in a wide, I guess. But we're going to uh, head back where we like to stay at Collapse Chronicles, and that is over here in the deep end of the Doomsday Prophecy Pool, where we talk about things like, you, you know, uh, the sixth mass extinction and human extinction, hopefully, and the collapse of ecosystems and the entire planet, which has nothing to do with a uh, few clueless morons choosing to overdose on fentanyl on the streets of San Francisco. Nothing whatsoever. Uh, so we're going to stay down here in the deep end. And before we go over here to Caitlin Johnstone's latest, <coughs> I just want to touch briefly. I don't, I don't know how many of you guys... Uh, have sent me the link uh, to this story that came out a few days ago uh, about how humans and probably all mammals, all mammals, including humans, will go extinct in 250 million years. 250 years million years, I guess, when the continents uh, clump back together or something, where uh, I can't even remember the journal that this absolutely unadulterated horseshit story was published, suggesting on any level that mammals were going to be alive on this planet uh, a quarter billion years from now, including humans. That humans are, are going to be around in 250 million years. I, 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 I mean, this story is so absurd. I, I don't know what to do with it. it, it just, just to think that there is anywhere on this planet... There is any sort of person calling themselves any sort of a scientist, a biologist, a ecologist, an evolutionist, whatever, trying to suggest that humans or, or any other mammal are, are, are going to be alive on this planet in 250 million years they make the, you know, human extinction by the year 2026 people look intelligent. It, 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 if, if this is the definition of science, that, that anybody uh, calling it science, claiming that, it, it, that something happening 250 million years ago 
might spell the extinction of mammals, including humans. Uh, they need to be fired. They need to be fired. They need to go back to kindergarten. Uh, it, 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 I'm not going to insult my intelligence or yours uh, commenting uh, uh, on this unadulterated horseshit. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it's so sad that this story is actually receiving any sort of serious attention in the academic or mainstream uh, media that, that, that it is hilarious. It, it, it is just showing, it's just one more example uh, of how we are completely doomed on this planet, and it has nothing to do with some supercontinent reforming in 250 million years. So anyway, I wanted to uh, get that off, but we're going to listen to this little uh, lefty that I am quickly losing respect for, Caitlin Johnstone. I have read several of Caitlin's essays. You know, I, I know you guys have a hard time believing this, but I still consider myself to be a lefty. It gets harder and harder every day. I am so embarrassed of what the left has become uh, uh, between the greenies and the limp dicks. Uh, Caitlin Johnstone uh, is, is one of the, you know, Caitlin Johnstone and Chris Hedges, and there's still a precious few uh, lefties who uh, I can respect, but I have to admit that I am quickly losing all respect that I had for Caitlin Johnstone. I was going to cover her uh, hopium soaked apocalyptic uh, essay I read a few days ago and just decided just don't bother with it but she's done it again she's back again and, and, and guys this is almost up there with uh, humans be becoming extinct in 250 million years the, the level of cluelessness uh, demonstrated by Caitlin Johnstone, uh, I am completely embarrassed. Uh, as uh, I I anyway, we're gonna let Caitlin Johnstone embarrass herself uh, here in the Doomosphere. Take it away, Caitlin, and bray your ignorance all over the planet. <clears throat> Unprecedented times <coughs> call <coughs> for unprecedented measures. And there you go. Whenever I talk about the kinds of changes human civilization is going to have to make if we want our species to survive into the future for 250 million years until the continents regroup, I always get people saying that no such civilization has ever existed in all of human history, that at no time has there ever been a large industrialized civilization wherein human behavior was driven by collaboration rather than competition wherein the profit motive was eliminated as a driver of civilization, wherein humans work in cooperation with the ecosystem for the good of all beings, where peace and harmony prevail and everyone has enough. <clears throat> and, of course... They are correct. There you go. At no time has any civilization like that ever existed. <clears throat> but at no time has humanity ever been 
in the situation it is in currently either. At no other time in history have humans been so close to destroying the biosphere with their profit-driven behavior. At no time have there ever been this many humans on the planet. At no time have there ever been billions of human brains networked with each other in real time the ways the way ours are now via the internet i would share a story about this uh, conversation i shared with my friend who has been on the internet and is 100% convinced after uh what what's the term that caitlin just used uh, networking their brains with other brains on the internet that my friend has done her research and has looked at the facts. She has networked her brain with other humans and come to the 100% conclusion that Lahaina Maui was taken down in a directed energy strike by the deep state. And now I guess we have all of these human brains interconnecting on the, uh, on the internet talking about how the biggest threat to humans and mammals uh, not to mention uh, all of our other fellow Earthlings, which they leave out of the article, are going to go extinct in 250 million years when the continents shift. This is what you get when brains connect on the Internet. Uh, <coughs> I I I anyway, <coughs> where was I? Let's get back. To Caitlin, that last one, you know about how all of these brilliant scientific cooperative humans are going to connect up with their fellow humans on the internet. That last one is kind of a big deal, by the way. The fact that billions of human beings now have access to all of the information known to man, including that Lahaina Maui was taken down in a direct energy hit by the deep state and that humans are going to go extinct in 250 million years. You know, that information known to man and instantaneous communication with each other is far and away the most significant thing ever to happen to our species since the evolution of the human brain. And it will get even more significant as improved translation services network us even further. Though from the outside, we might look more or less the same way we looked three decades ago. In reality, there have probably been more significant changes in our species in the last three decades than in the previous three millennia. Humans are functionally a very, very different kind of organism than they were before you and I were born. Yes. We are a very, very different kind of organism than we were 30 years ago. We have literally never been here before. We've never seen anything remotely like this. Not even close. We are in completely uncharted territory. These are wildly unprecedented times, and unprecedented times call for unprecedented measures.
let's look up uh, this this definition of unprecedented. You're going to hear this uh, word more and more unprecedented. Uh, let's see. It would be real nice if they, okay, unprecedented, an adjective, I guess it is an adjective, or is it an adverb? Anyway, unprecedented, never done, or never known before, unprecedented, there you go, get used to listening to that. Uh, and now I have no idea. Now I have managed to, uh, okay. Never happened before. Yes. <clears throat> so, unprecedented times, times that have never happened before call for Measures that have never happened before. Because our situation is so dramatically unlike anything we have ever seen before, the same must also necessarily be true of the solutions to the problems we now face. Yes. If there is a way out of this mess, if there is a way out of this mess, thank you for the conditional tense, it is going to look like anything we have ever seen before. So, okay, 300,000 years of study of looking at human nature and Caitlin can find everything that has ever been written about human nature on the internet. Uh, looking at 300,000 years of collapsed civilizations where you see the same patterns emerging over and over and over and over again. You can go on the internet now and find everything that has ever been written about how every single civilization that has ever been created by humans has collapsed. <clears throat> yes. Anyway, our species is at an adaptation or extinction juncture at this point in space-time, we are staring down the barrel of total extinction via nuclear Armageddon or environmental collapse or the recombination of the continents. <clears throat> everything, everything that got us to this point, otherwise known as staring down the barrel of total extinction, yes, is the result of the behavior patterns we have been moving in for the centuries leading up to it. And I would, I go way beyond centuries. Uh, it, it, from the time we climbed down from the trees it's, uh, there are some people, of course, uh, I know listening to this, I know Colony of Cells and my buddy Roy believe that everything was predetermined in the, you, you know, the Big Bang 14 billion years ago. Where we are as a species was predetermined and there's nothing that humans have done uh, it has nothing to do with free will. This was written into the stars 14 billion years ago, the trajectory we're on. Uh, so, what does this all mean? 
let Caitlin Johnstone explain this. Uh, I, I've never really been sure what Caitlin Johnstone's resume is. I honestly don't know anything about her. She uh, she is a lefty. She's not a bad writer. Uh, she doesn't seem to ever interview any people. It's just pretty much just uh, off the top of her head. So this is what, according to Caitlin Johnstone, whoever she is exactly, this is what this means. Okay. What this means is that any deviation away from our trajectory toward annihilation will necessarily entail a drastic unpatterning. Yes, since you cannot separate our circumstances from the patterns which gave rise to it. Even if you could wave a magic wand and have our biosphere perfectly healthy again in all nuclear weapons reduced to atoms, our behavior patterns would just cause us to destroy the biosphere again and rebuild the nukes in a matter of years. So, if we are to survive into the future, we are going to have to drastically change our patterns. There you go. We, meaning humans, who have 300,000 years of history, you can go on the internet and check pretty quickly. Entire books have been written about it. And anyway, uh, I think we all know what I'm talking about. We're going to have to drastically change our patterns. We're going to have to begin acting in ways we have never acted before. There you go. So we can begin organizing civilization in a way that it has never before existed. So, sure, sure, maybe I am being unrealistic in describing the radically divergent kind of civilization we are going to have to create, but it's also the only kind of future civilization that can possibly exist. If it is impossible to create a wildly different kind of civilization than the kind we've been living in, then it's also impossible that humans exist in future centuries because we will necessarily wipe ourselves out with our self-destructive patterning otherwise. So far, I have no fault with uh, Caitlin Johnstone. Sure, maybe I am being unrealistic. So, while I am talking about a future civilization that sounds utopian, I am also talking about the only kind of future civilization that can possibly exist. If there are future generations, they will necessarily be living in a society that functions in a completely different way than our current one does. And I personally believe it is possible. I really think we can make the adapt adaptation or extinction jump if we want to in wildly unprecedented times no possibility is off the table. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Caitlin, come on, girl.
You're, you're hurting me. Caitlin John Snow knows goddamn well everything uh, out of those last two paragraphs were unadulterated horseshit on every single level. There is not one, not one iota of evidence to support her conclusion that humans are going to do a goddamn thing to change their patterns. A friend of mine, uh, we were just talking, and a friend of mine was talking about how they were suggesting to their, I guess, to their co-workers in, in Texas about, uh, you know, doing their part to save the planet by turning the air conditioner down in the office down one degree. And they took a vote, and it was voted, no, we are not going to turn down the air conditioner one degree. Oh, Jesus. You know, uh... <laughs> I'll have to rethink all of those fentanyl addicts dropping dead on the streets of San Francisco. Uh, it, 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 you know, the, the, just this, this unbelievable hopium, uh, apocalyptic crap out there. Uh, goddamn humans and, and mammals are going to be alive 250 million years from now. A, you know, just talk to Bill Gaty. Uh, humans are going to eat. We are going to literally eat every single mammal larger than a mouse uh, sometime probably in the next 100 years. Every single mammal uh, on, on this planet uh, will be eaten by humans. And then guess what is on the menu next? Uh, I'm with, I'm, I'm with Bill Gaty, uh, zero evidence, and, and, and in fact, 100% of the evidence is diametrically opposed to Caitlin Johnstone's conclusion, uh, that humans are going to re-pattern themselves to uh, save this civilization that needs to go, the sooner the better. Anyway, I need to uh, go feed the little dog a pork chop. Are you ready for your pork chop? The little dog is having pork chops tonight. I, uh, <laughs> I cooked dinner for the little dog, and he's telling me his dinner is late, so... Uh, I better get to feeding my dog pork chops in this civilization while I still can. But did you, you chewed your bone? Uh, bye guys. Okay, I'm